my gosh. Oh, are you struggling with watercolor? Because I know the feeling. So today I'm gonna give you five, one, two, three, four, five tips on how to choose the right watercolor for your next painting. My name is Gabriel Stockton, and on this channel, we talk about watercolor. I'm gonna show you something you might not know. If you're beginning watercolors, today I promise to talk a little bit about the color. We usually talk about value, and we usually talk about paper and brushes. But today with paint, what you're gonna leave with is that you're gonna understand temperature, whether something's cool or warm. So let's go ahead and dive right in to what I brought for you. For you beginners, you should first know that watercolor is a transparent medium as opposed to acrylic or oil. In our package, we have one dot card. I'll explain more later. In the rest of the package, we have two tubes of Daniel Smith paint and one or two, 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 two watercolor sticks. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I didn't explain watercolor sticks versus tubes of paint. So watercolor stick, I've been talking about this a little bit about on my channel, but just a real quick intermission about this watercolor stick. So these are watercolor sticks are basically like a pan in your hand. If you've ever had these wonderful little pans before, they look like this. This is a full pan. So actually these little things, there's three of them in one watercolor stick. And the cool thing is, is you've got tons of more pigment. Now in the States, the suggested retail price is about $11. So just look at comparison. Do you want to have a watercolor stick or do you not want to just keep buying a tube? Or you can have both. All right, let's get back to what we were talking about. For our first watercolor stick, we have phalo green and phalo green tube. So this is a watercolor stick and a tube of paint. So we have two tubes of paint, two watercolor sticks. What is the difference? To the normal eye, these would be the same. To a trained artist's eyes, these are different. Now let's take a look at the brand ambassador dot card. We have yellow, blue, and red. These are called primaries. These are green. Where do they fit in primaries? They don't. They are mixed with yellow and blue. But which way do they lean? Do they lean closer to blue or yellow? Does this go closer to yellow or blue? That's the question. So this is phalo green. And this is phalo green. These are not the same tubes. Right here, this says blue shade. This says yellow shade. So this one's gonna go more towards yellow, and this one's gonna go more towards blue. And right here we've got, do do do, we come here and it says pigment seven. This right here is pigment 36. Pigment green, 36. Pigment green, seven. So there you have it, these, are two greens, one leaning this way, one leaning that way. So with that said, which one is cooler and which one is warmer? To illustrate my point more, we're gonna use this paper here and we're gonna lay that there and we're gonna get our dot card. We have three colors on this chart that we can use for primaries. I'll start with this pyro red, which is a good substitute for cadmium red. Hansa yellow light, which makes a really nice yellow. For our primary blue, we're going to use cerulean blue. Great blue for sky with air-like quality. Now that we have our primaries established, blue, yellow, and red, let's grab our watercolor sticks. 
For this example, I'm going to paint right from the watercolor stick. There's our phthalo green yellow shade. And here's our phthalo blue shade. Taking our time to get to know these colors, we can see which way they're leaning. Are they leaning both cold? But the question was, which one is the warmer green? Which leads us to point number four. Phthalo green yellow shade is our winner, not phthalo green blue shade. The yellow shade will go from yellow to orange to red, getting warm quickly. The blue shade goes from blue to purple, then getting to red. So it takes a lot longer to get to a warmer stage. Extra bonus. Here's a color wheel for those of you that need just a little more understanding of color temperature. So here we have our greens, and over there is our red, yellow, and our blue. So right here we have our colors. This is the yellow shade falls in here. And right there is our neutral green. We've got our blue shade over here, which is falling onto the left of the neutral green. So look at the short distance at this green that has to travel from going over to warm. It passes through the yellow, the orange, and then it gets warm into the hot, fiery reds, right? A very short distance. That's a nice, warm green. Let's see how far phthalo blue green shade has to travel. Well, it had to travel past turquoise and blue into purples and magenta and all the way over to the fiery red. Practical use for these colors, warm afternoon grass or cool dew of the morning grass. Next paint project, you'll know what colors to pick out. Good luck. Before we go to point number five, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. And, oh, go ahead and hit that like button and pound that subscribe because you can get more cool content here. Thank you so much. And point number five. Five is actually since you already know so much about picking out your own paint let's go ahead and talk about paper do you need 140 pound or 300 pound go ahead and click right here and if you want to learn now and just do some paintings let's go right here grab your favorite beverage and i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.